This print came off of Creality CR6 SE. No way. Do you have a CR6 SE or a CR6 Max just sitting on the garage floor collecting dust like this one? Well, it's not all the machine's fault because you know what? Sometimes it's all about performance and it's tired of just printing PLA and pet G and it's looking for that next step up in performance. What do I mean by that? How about letting it print like nylon, polycarbonate and carbon fiber? How do we do that? Well, we start by replacing the hot end. Yes, replacing the hot end by Micro Swiss, an all metal hot end. Go to store.microswiss.com and let's replace this hot end. By replacing the hot end, you will be able to print at higher temperatures for nylon, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. And you no longer have to worry about the PTFE liner. And we won't have to replace it, at least not that often. But what's this? They're sold out, no way. Sold out. Oh. Not all is lost. Just hit the notify when available and Microsoft will let you know. Now let's go ahead and clean this up just using a Swiffer. There are limitations though. Your hotbed can only go up to 100C and your hot end to 260C. Now with assembling this all metal hot end, you will need to borrow some tools from your CR6SE like these Allen keys and a nozzle tool. I would also add another crescent wrench into the, your toolkit. I'll show you why later. You notice on the box it says CR6 SE. Well, it's also compatible with the CR6 Max as well because they both use the same unique hot end with the string gauge for leveling. Here's a handy dandy card to show you how to assemble. And everything is in separate pouches. You notice that this has this like compression sleeve. It's almost like for uh, plumbing, <laughs> kind of cool. Brass sleeve, two grub screws, Allen wrench, and of course your um, little wrench. Here is a um, nozzle that comes with it. Now this is only a plated wear resistant nozzle. And here is your, uh, your cooling block and your compression nut. Everything is neatly packed and you also get your um, heat block and silicone sock. And that's about it that comes with it. That's all you need. Now we're going to heat up the hot end. We're going to bring it up to 235 degrees. This will allow us to remove the nozzle and the PTFE tube. However, I'm not going to be removing the nozzle. I'll just show you how it's done. First, we're going to unscrew the cover. Just take out these two screws. As we're removing this cover, you want to be careful with the wire that's for the part cooling fan because it's going to be tucked behind this little retainer. And just pull it out slightly and then untuck the wire from behind. This way you're not pulling on it. And this is gonna be extremely hot. So be careful with that silicone sock. So you don't burn your fingers. Now I'm not going to be uh, using this nozzle. It's the whole hot end's coming off, but just in case if you are, you're gonna just hold the heating block and use the wrench to remove the nozzle. I'm gonna be using a hardened steel nozzle because I'm going to be printing some special filament at the end. And that's why we're gonna use a hardened steel nozzle. Now you're gonna to wanna to remove this retaining clip and pull your PTFE tube out by pushing down on this. So mine came out easily and uh, sometimes you may need to heat it up even more. Unplug it, let it cool down before you start taking everything apart because again, it'll be really hot. We're gonna start removing the cooling fan. Now the hot end is held by two screws on the top on the string gauge. We want to be careful here. If you notice that uh, these screws are on really tight, use your adjustable wrench to kind of secure that uh, um, hot end in place as you remove these two screws. So this way you don't twist that uh, string gauge. But after we loosen these, this uh, hot end will just fall right out. And if you have the PTFE um, stuck in there, you may want to remove the retainer um, in the a hot end that way it will come out now we're going to remove the heating cartridge and the thermistor now the thermistor can get kind of stuck in there and what you can do is you can push it out from the other side so you want to be just 
careful not to damage this because they are pretty delicate. Assembly is very straightforward. I mean, if you've done any of these Micro Swiss uh, all metal hot ends, it's the same process. We're going to be putting on this titanium heat break on, and we're going to just use this wrench and just get it nice and snug. We don't want to over torque this because we're going to be torquing it down again once it's on there. Now we're going to just insert the heater block into the cooling block and we're going to fasten these together with a little grub screw. Now when we put this in, we want to make sure that uh, the heating block is all the way up into the cooling block before we start tightening it down. You notice that I will start to pinch this together a little bit to make sure that nothing is shifting. And we're just make sure it's nice and snug because we will be torquing this down later. Now we're going to put on our nozzle. Uh, again, it's up to you if you want to reuse the nozzle off of your old um, hot end or the one that was supplied with the kit or even like what I'm doing is putting on a hardened steel nozzle. I'm just, just giving a nice little grunt to secure it. And now we're going to put this back on the printer. First, we're going to install the heater cartridge and then the thermistor. Again, we want to be careful when we're tightening these down, not to go too tight. And we want to make sure that both ends on the right side are flush. You'll notice that the heater cartridge is out a little bit and it's a little finicky. So I'm holding it in place and then I tighten it down. We want to make sure that you use the longer screws for the top because uh, you removed a total of four screws, two for the cover and two for the hot end. Now we're going to just go ahead and secure the hot end down with these two screws and we'll continue on. Now I did remove the cable and I found it easier just to get to that uh, screw for the hot end. So if you do, just go ahead and plug it back in. Well, if you've ever replaced a water line on a refrigerator, you may have seen this before. It's a compression fitting. You go ahead and you put on your nut first and then your compression fitting. And uh, this will secure your PTFE tube into your hot end. <laughs> Pretty cool that this has uh, made it to the 3D printing space. Go ahead and push down your PTFE as far down as it goes. Start securing the nut. You'll notice that on the PTFE tube, that uh, that's where it was at the top, all the way down into the hot end. Now we're going to take two wrenches and we're going to secure the cooling block and then just slightly make uh, that nut nice and snug. You know, we don't want to over tighten this and just double check, make sure that the PTFE tube is nice and secure. Now we're going to turn on the printer and set the temperature to 220. This is where we're going to torque down the hot end to 30 inch pounds. If you don't have a torque uh, wrench like I do, just give it a nice good grunt. <laughs> so, I mean, that's all you can do. Now we're going to just also tighten all the grub screws. Be very careful because this hot end is extremely hot. Keep your distance. We're going to just make sure that everything is nice and snug before we assemble everything. After everything's nice and snug, we're going to go ahead and turn off the printer and let the whole hot end cool down. And then we'll finish the assembly. First, we're going to put on our cooling fan. Make sure that uh, that wire retainer is in front of all the wires to the strain gauge. And let's secure the cooling fan, hot end cooling fan, that is. Now, I did replace a hot end before on this unit, um, so there was a zip tie here before, and you didn't see that, that I did cut that off prior. So, if you were missing the zip tie or you took it off, now's a good time to put one back on. And don't forget your silicone sock. Some people will put this on before the cooling fan. I actually forgot about it, so it's going on now. Just some pictures of it fully assembled. It's a shame. It's a nice cooling block and you don't get to see what it looks like. <laughs> so after it's all assembled. 
Now I'll tuck the wire behind the wire retainer and we're going to just put in the two screws for the cover. Now we're going to go ahead and power up the printer and we are going to set the temperature on the nozzle to 220 degrees. What we're going to be looking for is any temperature spikes up and down like five degrees or more swings. One degree here or there is not what we're looking for. If it jumps around more erratic like five degrees we're going to have to do what's called PID tune. Right now mine looks fine but what I'm going to do is leave a link in up top here for a Brian Vines video on how to do PID tuning. It's a great tutorial and I suggest you go ahead and look at that if you need to do one. We're going to be using Pryline. It is a polycarbonate carbon fiber. And uh, this is some really nice stuff. It's pretty expensive too. It's about $50 a, a spool. But if you got your printer dialed in, it comes out with some amazing results. So let's see what the CR6SC with the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End will do. I'm more of a practical prints kind of person, but start out with a calibration cube. <laughs> I'm telling you, this thing looks better in person. I, I mean, it looks great on camera, but man, in person, it looks even better. You can see a little line there, one eighth of the way up, but otherwise, <laughs> you can't see any layer lines on this. And that's what this, you know, polycarbonate carbon fiber is about. I mean, you, I mean, this is amazing. This Benchy also came out great. I mean, there was no post-processing done on this. Bed adhesion was um, using a just a standard glue stick. You will see that there is some little stringy right there, but otherwise, this is a real, real nice print. It's probably one of my best Benchies ever. <laughs> so, yeah, not too bad. Now this is for the Eggbot Droid. Um, this is a gear for the drivetrain. And I actually have this in one of my other Eggbots. And I figured I wanted a stronger part. See this on the bottom? That's just because I used a glue stick and there was the two prints ahead. If I wanted to finish on the bottom, I would just clean the bed and just gone with it. But as soon as the part cools, it comes right off. So glue stick on a glass bed, I would suggest. But man, great prints overall unbelievable results. Well, I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. If you could please like and subscribe, that would be great. Please have a wonderful day, weekend, evening, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in.